Hey, it's another video here from nateatheflycrate.com. Let's talk winter fly fishing. In today's video, we're gonna be answering the most common questions we get about what it takes to actually catch fish when it's cold and freezing and just miserable to be outside. And you know, as you can see right now, it's snowing. It's a very fitting atmosphere right now. So let's get into it. The first question we always get is, can you fly fish in the winter? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You can catch trout in the winter, even when it's snowing just like this and it's freezing cold, but it is gonna take more time, patience, and effort. And I'll be honest with you, it is common to cast to the same hole dozens of times before you even get a bite or any sort of resemblance of that there's trout in the water. That's just gonna happen. But there are a few upsides to fishing in the winter. One, you get to get out of the house. And two, there's gonna be less people in the water because who would wanna put up with this in the first place? I mean, look at this, but it is pretty. Here's the second most common question we get. When is it too cold to fly fish? And the answer is a little bit more surprising. It's less dependent on the temperature of the water and more dependent on what temperature are you willing to fish at, like air temperature. Like right now, it's below freezing and it's snowing, but I'm wearing layers and I've got fingerless wool gloves on. I'm very cozy right now, I'm nice and warm. Now, there are no regulations that limit to what temperature you can actually fish at, but once you get below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, things start to freeze and your guides start to ice up. One of the most common questions we get about fly fishing in the winter is where should you actually go to go fly fishing? And I'm not talking about where in the river or the stream, we'll get to that, but I'm talking about where should you drive? What are your best places to spend the most time at? Now you only really have two good options when it comes to fly fishing in the winter. Your two best options to go fly fishing at are spring fed creeks and tailwaters. And that is because they have a stable and near constant water temperature year round, which is good. This creates a stable environment for food to thrive in, which then creates larger populations of trout and trout that feed more actively throughout the winter. Spring fed streams and rivers also remain at a stable temperature throughout the year, and that is because the water that is feeding these streams is coming directly out of the ground out of aquifers, which are below the freezing point. So that means they're a little bit warmer than the water that is constantly exposed to the air. Tailwaters are rivers and streams that flow out from the bottom of a dam from like a reservoir or a lake. Now even if the reservoir or lake is iced up and frozen on the top, the water underneath will not. And this is the water that's being released out the underside of the dam. And that's why tailwaters have a more stable temperature year round and they're going to be warmer than most streams or rivers that aren't being fed by the dam or reservoir. Now the good news is, if you don't have any spring-fed creeks or any tailwaters near you, you can still fish any open water that's still flowing and not iced over. Now it is going to be a little bit colder than you would find elsewhere, so it is going to take a little bit more time and effort to get any sort of bites out of any trout. Okay, now let's talk about where do trout go in the winter? Where are you actually going to find trout that are going to be feeding actively? So naturally, trout are going to hold in the deeper sections and pools of a river that naturally have some sort of protection or shelter from predators just in case they feel a little threatened. Now, you could say that deeper water will hold the trout because Predators can't really have access to them, especially if they're coming from above. So you wanna to look to places that have some sort of nearby shelter that they can sort of ditch into. And that could be undercut banks, boulders, rocks, fallen logs, branches, trees, deep pools. Even in the winter, trout will be tucked away in these faster moving seams and pocket water that have a little bit of depth. And that's simply because those are the best feeding zones. Actively feeding trout will still be found in these moderately fast riffles and pools that you're used to fishing year round. When it's really cold like this, they spend their time in two different places, one for feeding and one for resting. The deepest sections of the pool offer the most safety and will be used for resting because it offers the most protection from predators. These deep pools usually have a very high sediment or sand layer to it. There's little to no food, so they'll rarely be feeding here. Trout will do most of their winter feeding in the shallower water, above, at the edges, or at the tail end of the pool, in those faster riffles and seams, simply because that is where the food is. So you'll want to target those areas and those trout simply because those are the ones that are feeding. Now one of the most common questions we get is, what are the best trout flies for the winter? If you're going to go fly fishing the winter, here are our top 8 picks for best trout flies. Zebra midges, hare's ear nymphs, jig squirmy wormies, candy eggs, Paragons, Griffiths gnats, crystal jig buggers, and waltz worms. 
Now here's why those are our favorite trout flies for the winter. Fly selection is even more important at this time of year as trout will be feeding less aggressively and less frequently. Now you're not really going to rely on dry fly fishing as much. In fact, it's it's pretty rare that you'll be encountering any sort of dry fly action unless you're on some sort of, you know, really warm spring fed creek or river and like a tail water that's being regulated temperature wise by the dam release. So during the winter months, trout are gonna be feeding on nymphs like mayfly, caddis, stonefly and midge larva. So that's like the main, you know, food pyramid typically during the winter. You can sprinkle in some crayfish, minnows, baitfish, that sort of thing. Now let's talk about midges. So midges are a an abundant food source throughout the entire year. The good thing is that they're always present so you can use them all of the time. And that's like 80% of the trout's diet when it comes to this time of year. You can also do really well on attractor patterns like worms, like eggs, uh, leeches, crayfish, that sort of thing. But eggs and worms are gonna be really, really productive during the uh, fall and early spring when it's still pretty cold. That's when a lot of fish species are spawning. So a lot of those eggs will wash downstream to trout that are awaiting for them and they'll just scoop them up. And uh, they're really high protein, so trout will navigate and migrate to those areas where trout are spawning and sit downstream so that the eggs come right to them. How do you keep your fly rod guides from freezing over? Sadly, there isn't a long lasting solution to this. No matter what you do, it's only gonna be a matter of time before it ices over, and that's simply because the water is coming in from your fly line because the fly line has a large surface area, and then that's gonna drag the water back in. The air's really cold, it's gonna freeze it right to your guide and that's the problem. So you really only have two solutions. The first solution is you use some sort of anti-freezing paste or you know chapstick or some sort of oil like cooking spray. Now this solution doesn't last very long and you have to constantly reapply. So that's you know a negative. Now the only other option is to use a mono rig. Now mono rigs are incredibly thin and they don't drag back a lot of water with them because they have a very small surface area and that water isn't going to reach your guides as often. It sheds most of the water that it carries. Less water in the guides means less water to freeze over. Now, public service announcement when it comes to the guides freezing and icing over. Don't use your fingers to break off the ice. There's a really high likelihood that you can damage your guides doing that. The best solution is to take your guides and run them through the water real quick and sort of like wipe them off or, you know, shake off your rod a little bit. And that is because the water is warmer than the air. It's just a faster and safer way to remove the ice. What's the best way to rig nymph flies? Trout are significantly less active during the winter months, so it's actually a really good idea to offer as many delicious options as possible, meaning two to three nymph flies on the same rig, possibly fished under a strike indicator or using like some sort of tight line method. And you do wanna check on your local regulations. Some states and areas only allow up to two flies on a rig at a time. In some states and areas, you can go up to three. It's just a good way to maximize your time on the water. So think of it as a juicy buffet line. Start off the fly leader using a section of five to six X tippet. These are thinner diameter tippets, which are great in the winter months and cold months when the water is a little bit more shallow and clear. It gives you a better chance not to spook any fish away. At the top of your nymphing rig, you're going to add your strike indicator. Now below the strike indicator, depending on the depth and speed of the water, you'll want to use 1.5 to two times the length. Now this is where you'll add your first fly, which could be some sort of a tractor pattern or lightweight nymph, you know, like a San Juan worm or a zebra midge. Then using a new section of tippet, either tied off of the bend or eye of the hook using a clinch knot, this is where you'll add your second fly. And make sure to position the heaviest fly at the bottom of the rig. And the reason for that is because it makes it harder for you to tangle your fly line. Now you can also reverse that. You could have the heavier pattern as your first fly and then positioning a lighter weight pattern below, maybe like 12 to 16 inches. And that way it's not too close to where it'll get snagged very easily. And it's not too far where it's just gonna get caught up in all the micro currents that are underneath the surface. Now there is a benefit to fishing two to three nymph flies at a time. 
It allows you to test multiple colors and sizes at once. And it also allows you to test multiple different insects to see what trout are actually keying in on, which is great because then you can double down on what's actually working. Here are some quick tips for winter fly fishing. First, focus on fishing from around 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That is when trout are gonna be most active. The best fishing occurs when water temperatures are around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can do a quick Google search for the uh, state authorities or local authorities that have like uh, meters in the water and you can do a quick check on the temperatures and you can do like a rough estimate of maybe some of the smaller streams that don't have these gauges. Don't be afraid to switch patterns frequently. Trout get used to certain patterns and shapes. So if you can sort of switch that up, they'll be like, oh, brand new food and uh, they won't know the difference. Keep moving and cover as much water as possible. The biggest thing I see is people just sitting in the same hole for half hour, an hour. They know there's trout in there, but they're not biting. As opposed to swinging or stripping in a streamer, try dead drifting one. You'll be surprised at what you'll get. Bait fish are also very inactive and lethargic during the winter, so it's very easy for them to get caught up in, let's say, the dam release or a very strong riffle, and they'll be tossed up in the current and trout will just be like, easy meal for me and they'll take it. So try dead drifting a streamer. If you can see trout in the water, don't target the entire pod. Target a specific trout and try to place those flies so that the flies drift downstream naturally right into its face. You want to make it as easy as possible because, you know, most of the time they're not really going to go out of their way to consume something. Consider fishing from the bank and not wading in the cold water unless you really have like waders that are rated for it or you layer up underneath pretty good. Um, you never really want to walk out on ice. You know, if you get caught in the water or, you know, your waders fill up, you take a tumble, you're going to get really cold. Your day's going to suck <laughs> pretty much. Bring a change of clothes. You know, you never know what could happen. And it's always really nice to have a fresh pair of socks or something to change into that's warmer.